Welcome to the Trading Bell. We have preached camp at Britam Holdings to come and speak with Tom Gitogo, the group CEO, right here at Britam. And he's going to break down how 2022 did for them. They just released their impressive results, 2.95 billion profit before tax. So I'm here to have a conversation with him, but right after his profile. Tom Gitogo is a CEO of Britam Holdings PLC, a diversified financial services group present in seven African countries. He's an accomplished financial services professional with over 30 years experience in various roles in the financial services industry in Africa and Europe. He is skilled in general management, commercial and business strategy, sales and financial operations, and talent management. Before joining Britam, Tom was responsible for CIC Insurance Group operations in four African countries, overseeing the growth and profitable performance of the listed financial services company. He also served as the CEO of Pan-Africa Life for seven years, significantly growing the group's premium income, investment income and profitability, which led to him being recognized as the CEO of the year by the Kenya Institute of Management. Tom holds a Master's of Business Administration in Strategic Management from Moy University and a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering from University of Nairobi. He is a Fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, a Fellow of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya and a member of the Institute of Certified Public Secretaries of Kenya and a member of the Institute of Directors of Kenya. Tom Gitoko, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Impressive results, 2.95 billion shillings profit before tax. That's quite amazing. What are your quick sentiments on it and what drove or what parameters drove to this? So first of all, we are quite happy with the results. Yeah. Uh, they show and indicate that our strategy is working. Yeah. Uh, the results uh, came from a top line growth, a steady uh, top line growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, efficiencies, operational efficiencies, and cost management, mm -hmm. as well as a growing contribution uh, to our business mm -hmm. uh, in the region. Okay. One would uh, probably ask, are you set, set to ent uh, maintain a sustainable and momentum going forward, looking ahead of some of the headways that you talked about that you're still facing, I believe even this year, they're not gone? Yes, yes, some of the headwinds that uh, we faced in 2022 yeah. have certainly crossed over. Mm -hmm. uh, cost of living yeah. is uh, a significant one in the insurance space. Mm -hmm. uh, exchange rates mm -hmm. uh, and interest rates as well. Uh, our strategy is working. Uh, it has another, uh, obviously we look at our strategy regularly, mm -hmm. uh, but we are midstream our five-year strategy. Mm -hmm. We like the results we have derived from it over the last two years, yeah. and uh, uh, there is no reason why uh, our strategy will not deliver okay. uh, this year, mm -hmm. despite the headwinds. Okay. What are some of your most significant drivers of this particular growth, and how do you plan to continue on in this particular segment that you mentioned? So if I break it down, yeah. it's our life business did quite well. Okay. Uh, the financial advisors we have are among the best in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that we will continue on the sustained, uh, on a sustainable growth path. Mm -hmm. Our products and services are definitely working uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are serving a need that uh, the market uh, has. Okay. So we again expect a growth from the demand of our products. Okay. Um, we are looking at technology and mm -hmm. innovation. Okay. What that has done is it has improved our operations mm -hmm. as well as our cost okay. uh, uh, structure. All right. So through innovation, uh, we are able to serve more customers uh, affordably i.e. our distribution costs are lower. Mm. So you will see from the results that uh, our cost numbers, mm. our expenses as a ratio to our uh, top line mm -hmm. uh, have improved. Okay. We expect this improvement mm -hmm. to continue in 2023. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's a limit as to how much uh, cost efficient you, have, uh, you can become, mm -hmm. uh, but we expect some more efficiencies to come through this year. Okay. The other thing we are doing uh, is uh, looking at our investment income. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not yet there, but we have significantly reduced 
volatility okay. because volatility was impacting our <coughs> results negatively yeah. previously. Mm -hmm. So part of the reasons we've done well this year is we've reduced volatility. We have l looked at our investment portfolio and have balanced carefully uh, being conservative and prudent vis-a-vis mm -hmm. uh, -vis, uh, return uh, uh, of, for our investment. Okay. So that journey will continue okay. and you will see that we will increasingly hold most of our investments to maturity because that matches our risk profile better, okay. our insu insurance uh, uh, profile. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, credit as you see it to your financial advisors and all. And just narrowing down to what you've said about life insurance, is this a paradigm shift? Are Kenyans beginning to appreciate these products from your view? Not as much as we would like, okay. but certainly not where we have come from. There okay. is significant improvement. Uh -huh. Part of that improvement is coming through working with uh, partners. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are people who are better at some market segments than we are. Some okay. organizations are better. Mm -hmm. uh, InsurTechs, for example, okay. have the ability to reach uh, to new, younger mm -hmm. uh, uh, markets that we have traditionally struggled with. Uh, the young people in, um, I in our region, uh, not just in Kenya, mm -hmm. are more technologically savvy. Yeah. They want choice in terms of the uh, products that they uh, subscribe to. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, we used to sort of have products and then say to the market, here, this is our product. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, it will serve you well. Mm -hmm. uh, please take it. Okay. Uh, we're increasingly seeing that uh, the younger people want to be involved in putting together mm -hmm. the product. So okay. you can't do that without innovation and technology. Yeah. That's partly how we are growing our top line by bringing in new markets. Okay, interesting insights there. Let's talk about your headwinds as, you know, as a company. Uh, so what are some of your headwinds on Britain's business operations and financial results? So let me start with the uh, cost of living. Yeah. Um, insurance in some quarters is not seen as an absolute necessity. Mm -hmm. So if families are struggling with uh, their wallet uh, in terms of uh, uh, disposable income, mm -hmm. understandably, one of the areas that would will struggle or receive second-hand attention mm -hmm. is insurance. So as long as there is uh, uh, the cost of living is going up, mm -hmm. the window is closing in on uh, uh, insurance and other uh, yeah. financial and, services. And you must have suggest. experienced this, especially during COVID season, right? Yes, there was uh, okay. a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the world is still recovering from yeah. the COVID uh, effects. Uh, effects. Mm -hmm. uh, so just when we thought we were recovering, uh, some country thought to invade another. And obviously, the subsequent logistical challenges, delays, um, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, have impacted the whole world. So yeah. uh, we've seen uh, that impacting uh, negatively on our business mm -hmm. through, you know, of course, the impact on exchange rates, mm -hmm. uh, the impact on interest rates, yeah. because remember some of our products are long term mm -hmm. and uh, any movement on the yield curve uh, significantly impacts uh, the valuation of our uh, balance sheet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about your investment income, which increased significantly year over year. Uh, which is commendable. So what are some of your primary drivers of this particular growth and how do you manage risk associated with investing? So there was a conscious uh, and deliberate action we took, which is to favor uh, fixed income uh, securities mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to, uh, for example, equities and, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, even where we had, we invested in government securities uh, we are uh, deliberately holding most of those to maturity as opposed to trading in okay. them. There was a time not too long ago when mm -hmm. trading in government bonds made a lot of sense, mm -hmm. uh, when the future or, or the yield curve medium to longer term was more predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, you now know that that is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the 
uh, move, deliberate move towards fixed income yeah. um, has helped obviously increase our uh, earnings from interest income yeah. and, and, and so on. Okay. And it has also reduced, not completely eliminated, mm -hmm. but significantly reduced uh, fair value adjustment uh, uh, or the volatility that comes with marking our investments to market. Okay. We're talking to Tom Gitogo, Group CEO, Britam Holdings, talking about how the year 2022 full year results did. We take a break, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are speaking with Tom Gitogo, with the Group CEO, Britam Holdings, just analyzing how their 2022 results did, which were quite impressive and it's quite bullish on matters on why they're doing and what they're looking ahead at. Now, let's talk about matters digital strategy. I think you've alluded to it a little. And I'm curious to know how this, uh, you know, impacted the success over that past year and how do you plan to continue innovating in this particular area? One of the things we have appreciated as Britam is that our organization may not necessarily have the DNA mm -hmm. uh, to come up with apps, uh, to come up with the technology that reaches the youngsters, wherever they are, yeah. or to emerging consumers, mm -hmm. uh, people who are not yet fully in the insurance space or working space, mm -hmm. uh, but still need uh, insurance. Uh, so what we have done is we have asked ourselves, who are good at this? Mm -hmm. uh, some of the obvious answers is insurtechs. Mm -hmm. Insurtechs don't have the burden of uh, heavy back office, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, Mm -hmm. red tape and so on. Yeah. So they are able to respond quickly to mm -hmm. the changing needs of uh, customers. Mm -hmm. So we, by partnering with them, uh, we are able to quickly respond mm -hmm. uh, to consumer needs that would otherwise have taken us longer or costed us more uh, to do. So we are very strong on partnerships. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we have said we will do, we have actually started uh, an internal uh, lab, uh, investment hub. Okay. Uh, we are calling it uh, the beta hub, where mm -hmm. we are inviting startups, mm -hmm. uh, people with ideas but not necessarily the capital. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we, we are providing the capital, uh, okay. some sort of safe place, sandbox for them to try out new ideas. Mm -hmm. And those that we see promising, we are more than happy to invest in. Okay. This is the only way we will future-proof our business going forward, uh, improve on sustainability because a lot of these are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and as Britam, we want to play our role in promoting entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With the good results, what message do you have or what is in store for your shareholders and stakeholders? That's an, an interesting question because yes. it's, it's double-edged. Uh -huh. um, when you have good results, uh, the natural thing to expect is that there will be dividends. Yep. Uh, in our case, mm -hmm. uh, we have a roadmap, uh, uh, some investments we want to make, mm -hmm. both in the region mm -hmm. as well as internally. Okay. Uh, we think we can be more efficient. Uh, right. Remember, part of our results have been uh, uh, come off the back of efficiencies. Mm -hmm. So taking into account some of the investments we want to make, mm -hmm. uh, this year will not be appropriate to pay uh, dividends. Dividend, yes. um, th what this does is it lays the foundation for uh, a future where we will be paying dividend mm -hmm. uh, pretty much on an annual uh, mm -hmm. basis. So it's investment to enable us uh, grow yeah. and therefore uh, pay dividends uh, and improve our return to our, not just our shareholders, but also our investors, okay. uh, because some of our business uh, uh, lines are investment uh, okay. lines, like in our asset management business. So uh, no dividends this year, but for a good reason, uh, as we go forward, uh, there will be dividends once we have uh, made the right investments uh, made the right uh, investments in the various infrastructures mm -hmm. uh, in our businesses here mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. in the region all right from what you're saying it seems you have already um, sharpened your axe 
to continue on uh, taking up this market. And so I'm curious, uh, looking around the entire ecosystem of the insurance industry, which as well touches on matters finance, what would you consider as Britam as your competitive advantage? So the obvious one is our super duper financial advisors. Uh, super they, duper financial advisors, I like that. Yes, <laughs> they are a cut above uh, uh, the yeah. average ones. Okay. We have invested over time mm -hmm. in our financial advisors. To be, to, to be honest, they are our main interaction with our customers, especially in the retail uh, space. Okay. So that's one uh, ad ad advantage we have. Yeah. The second one is we've invested in our brand over time, mm -hmm. something that uh, we are proud of, uh, something that we will continue uh, doing. Mm -hmm. So if you take into account the fact that we are deliberate about listening to our customers, mm -hmm. uh, responding to their needs, which change over time, yeah. Uh, and obviously realizing that the services we provide and what we do are not for us, it's for our uh, customers. So if we come up with a, a product that we think is wonderful, mm -hmm. we like testing it out in the market. Okay. Uh, because that's why we exist. Uh, yeah. That's why we exist. Wow. Lovely. I mean, and uh, as we come to the end of this conversation, I'm keen to see what you have in the future because you're sitting at this particular seat and I can see the flags of all these particular regions that you're covering. I can see you have quite a number. Those are six, seven. Wow, that's quite a number. So what is it? What are you looking into the future when you look at your business and uh, opportunities, challenges that you may anticipate? So let me start with uh, our business here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Our life business is the biggest. Yes. It ha we we have the we are the leading uh, in in terms of market share. Yeah. So we want to continue uh, growing. Mm -hmm. If you look at our general business here, mm -hmm. uh, we believe that there is a considerable headroom in uh, medical business, for example. Okay. So we want to continue growing um, in the medical insurance space, mm -hmm. uh, particularly given that this is a product that looking into the future will still be necessary. Mm -hmm. So we want to be relevant, uh, do it efficiently, um, and uh, use technology mm -hmm. to reduce any fraudulent uh, claims that there might be that may challenge uh, our uh, projection into the future. If I look into the region, mm -hmm. uh, for most of, in most of the countries, we only do general insurance. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at doing uh, fund management mm -hmm. where that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We are also looking to do life business uh, in some of these countries uh, that we now consider uh, are ripe, ripe for uh, life uh, business. So what do I see into the future? Continued growth here. Mm -hmm. That growth will come from partnerships yeah. and innovation. Uh, we've seen the impact that uh, uh, the climate change has yeah. um, uh, in our lives today. Absolutely. Uh, we, we have a business in Mozambique, as mm -hmm. you probably know, yeah. and in Malawi. Mm -hmm. And only uh, about two weeks ago, a week and a bit ago, yeah. uh, there were floods, significant of, floods, yeah. uh, cy Cyclone Freddy. Mm -hmm. So what that says to us is we have a role to play, not just in the aftermath mm -hmm. of uh, uh, such climatic uh, uh, adverse uh, climatic changes, mm -hmm. uh, but making or deliberately going into the space of looking at products mm -hmm. that help cushion the adverse effects of, say, famine, yeah. uh, flooding, mm -hmm. uh, so that our emerging customers in that space mm -hmm. uh, can count on us mm -hmm. uh, to. Uh, be there for them when okay. these things happen. Yeah. Now, part of obviously ESG is sustainability. Mm -hmm. We are big on uh, uh, conservation of energy, wow. conservation of water, mm -hmm. uh, because these are the right things to look at. Absolutely. Otherwise, they are quite, you know, they become quite, uh, our planet will not be sustainable mm -hmm. if we do not deliberately address some of these uh, yeah. issues. So, we are, uh, sustainability is. Is, will be a big uh, 
um, part of being part in of this our, near part future. Of our strategy. And I love that you've mentioned about that. I was about to ask you whether there's any, uh, uh, you know, sustainable CSR activity that you're doing, and I'm happy to hear uh, a bit of that progress that you yep. that you're making. We have a foundation that hasn't oh. been um, uh, very active, okay. but uh, it's one of the ones we've we have revived this year. Okay. Uh, through that foundation, we actually want to make more in, uh, investment okay. in um, uh, sustainability, mm -hmm. uh, climate change as, uh, an uh, as a big insurance and as a market leader in insurance. Um, what can we do about uh, flooding? What mm -hmm. can we do about our livestock farmers, our uh, crop uh, insurance? Uh, th these are areas we are working with like-minded partners okay. who are experts in climatic matters, weather matters, mm -hmm. so that we can predict and be ready for uh, our customers okay. uh, when these things happen. All right. Mm. And maybe as a parting shot, um, your industry, some people shudder to think about it. It's very of us risky. <laughs> And, and I think, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware, you've seen, sometimes you've reported in the news where some insurance companies have uh, ran on their feet after things went south in a way. Do you think you have, uh, I don't know, what are your thoughts about that? How, how risky is your business when you do a risk assessment? Are you worried? Now, <laughs> being alive is a risky business. There is no way you it. can <laughs> avoid risk. Yes. And what our industry is about is mitigating these risks okay. for individuals, mm -hmm. for families, mm -hmm. and for business. Yes. Uh, what we are saying is, um, as you do your normal business, let us worry about the risks that you encounter. Mm -hmm. However, for us to help you, you need to, I mean, we need to talk together yeah. so that we understand some of the risks uh, that you are exposing yourself to, and so that we can come up with the appropriate uh, products mm -hmm. uh, for that. Um, we, we, we live in risky times yeah. um, where, uh, you know, a risk in one corner of the globe or an event in one corner of the globe mm -hmm. just takes a matter of hours or if not minutes uh, yeah. to get to here. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, we would have thought that uh, Ukraine is very far from mm -hmm. uh, Kenya, yeah. but um, everyone now can feel the impact of some of these geopolitical uh, You're right. activities. You're right. uh, it's also, you know, um, probably appropriate to mention that uh, our, in, you know, the world is becoming a, a village, mm -hmm. uh, more so. It's always been, but it's more so now. Yeah. So the investment decisions that we make for our long-term liabilities and long-term portfolios can make the difference between being profitable and not being uh, profitable. Okay. This is these are areas we've invested in, okay. and so instead of being worried, as uh, as, as you indicated, mm -hmm. we are actually quite bullish about the future. Risk that. is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. In fact, to us, it's an important element. <laughs> That's a good place and that point to end the conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. There you have it. That's uh, Group Holdings CEO Tom Gitogu talking quite optimistic and bullish about the industry and looking forward to us to at least scale some heights in this particular organization. And he has broken it off for you. What do you have to do? Make sure you take up some of their products. I think they are quite amazing. And uh, he has spoken it all why they have the competitive edge. Thank you so much for your time. I leave you now with the markets.